Welcome to the AI Ireland podcast, your window into the world of AI innovation on the island of Ireland. Join us as we explore how AI is harnessed to tackle both business and societal challenges, revealing the cutting edge solutions emerging from this vibrant AI community. Don't forget to subscribe for the latest updates and insights in the world of AI. Welcome to the AI Ireland podcast. I'm your host, Mark Kelly, founder of AI Ireland. In this episode, we're at the British Ambassador's Residence, where we had the privilege of interviewing Professor Gina Neff. The dinner brought together a group of Irish and UK experts in AI to discuss the objectives of the UK's AI Safety Summit in November. Professor Neff is the Executive Director of the Mindaroo Centre of Technology and Democracy at the University of Cambridge. Known for her research on the impact of the digital information environment, her extensive background includes advising international organisations, leading humanitarian initiatives and contributing to AI for Trust solutions. Her academic achievements have earned her numerous awards as she's played a pivotal role in creating educational resources that have reached millions globally. You joined the conversation where I asked Gina a little bit about her background and how she got into this world. I studied the first wave of internet companies as part of my PhD research in sociology. And so I was in New York and all of these incredible companies, all this creativity was happening around me. And one of my professors said, you be a great dissertation if you could go and find out a little bit about this thing called the World Wide Web and, and why people are building new companies to be on part of it. And I bring that up in part because what we're seeing today with the enthusiasm and excitement around foundation lawyers and frontier tech has the same feeling of that first wave of pioneers. And I think part of the excitement and the enthusiasm will be how do we make the products and services that really delight people and that they want to use? And that's going to take a whole host of different kinds of voices and people and companies and opportunities in order to see that happen. Yeah, absolutely. So in your book, Human Centered Data Science, what are the key takeaways for listeners in terms of the impact of data science on individuals and society? One of the things that we've been trying to do in, in launching a new field called human-centered data science is really remind people that the analytics that drive our AI revolution have always behind them a human component. So there's always some aspect of human-centered design that you can bring to AI. And what we wanted to do was both think about the principles that are already put in place from research. So what makes things that users navigate easily and bring that to how people are talking about data science and AI? How do we think ethically at that intersection between data and people? How do we think about it, how it's used in organizations? And how do we really train up the next generation of innovators who are going to be in these industries and prepare them for doing the really hard work of being at the intersection of the challenges of designing, again, AI models, AI tools, AI products and services that sit at the intersection of the data and how people are going to use them. And if you can bring that human-centered approach, you're going to already be on the front foot in terms of better designs, better products, better ethics better things to help with people flourishing in their everyday life. Because if you've got that privacy by design and ethical approach, people will trust this. Yeah, I think it's about people's trust, but I think it's about making really good product, right? You make better products if you make things that respond to people's needs. And so part of what we were doing with the human-centered AI book was, uh, the human-centered data science book, was to bring in these principles of what human-centered AI looks like. How do you make sure that it's safety by design, ethical by design, private by design? And how do you make sure it is responsive to what people need and want? Because the concern is that you can have a stereotype flip-flop shorts in West Coast US building some of these products and services, but they're not necessarily taking into consideration everybody's per perspective and views. Look, we're sitting here in the EU and one of the choices and challenges we have are questions around freedom of expression. That's a concept, for example, from the way the U.S. law has developed, but it doesn't necessarily fit with EU principles and, and notions. I'm part of a consortium 
of 17 partners from 11 countries funded by the EU to build a mis, dis, and malinformation detection system called AI for Trust, where we're using AI for good. We're basically trying to see if we can get better content moderation and better handling of the stories that we tell about emerging misinformation by using AI to help the people who are in the front lines of communicating. And so by you bringing in those human-centered principles, you can understand the problem in different ways and you can build for the values that speak to the people who are going to use the products. Yeah. I could go into questions about the European Union and the US and harmonization, but that could take us all day. So that's a separate podcast. Tell us about some of the goals that you're doing within the Mindaru Center and the initiatives that you've set out there. Yeah, so the Mentorist Center for Technology and Democracy is the center that I run at Cambridge. And we really have four key initiatives. And one of them is the kind of work we're doing right now. How do we change the public conversation about technology? How do we ensure that we're talking about technology as a tool we use for our human values, not a tool to subvert or to discount how we think about democracy? The second really is to think about these questions of trust. So when we talk about trust in technology, our mission is not so much to help people build trust in technologies, but rather, how do we talk about trust in society and the impact of technologies on that? That's a really big social science question as well. We look also at the relationship between the environmental impact of our digital technology. And that means that these questions around the climate and, cl and climate change are, are front and center. And Ireland really is at the coalface, really, of how C trunk cables, internet, C network cables for the internet. And in Ireland, Ireland is a huge data center, data processing, home to many data centers. And so these questions of what are the environmental impacts of that are, are certainly, I think, incredibly important. And then... And then finally, the work that, that I and uh, one of my researchers do on the future of work. So how are we talking about these technologies as part of what work will look like? And with each four of these initiatives, we fundamentally question some of the power relationships that we have. So can we make technologies work for people, societies, and the planet? Can we really challenge who has power in these relationships and how we can hold these technologies more to public account. I'm really, really excited to unveil my new book, AI Unleashed, Navigating the AI Revolution as a Business Executive, which is now accessible to purchase on Amazon and Amazon Kindle. This publication is the fruit of half a decade's worth of meticulous research and high level conversations with experts in the field, both in Ireland and globally. The book is particularly timely, featuring current discussions on AI governance in the European Union and North America. If you're aiming to grasp the full scope of AI, ready your enterprise for its transformative power and utilize it to your advantage, this book is specifically crafted for you. It serves as a pragmatic guide clarifying misconceptions and presenting real world insights for leaders entering the AI sphere. The book covers an extensive array of subjects from AI's role in diverse industries to generative AI applications and provides guidance on avoiding typical missteps in AI initiatives, all supported by the most recent studies. Additionally, the book highlights case studies and applications that have earned accolades at AI awards throughout the years and amplifies top-notch AI utilization in Ireland. For executives, poly architects or technology aficionados seeking to make sense of the intricate world of AI, AI Unleashed Navigating AI Revolution is your essential handbook. So it's now available on Amazon. This book furnishes you with the expertise and instruments required to employ AI both effectively and ethically. Kind of building on my next question, because you also do work in terms of information and misinformation. We know that AI can be a power for good, but also it can be a power for negative aspects in terms of disinformation. Tell us about some of the work and some of your research and what has shown how people can be positively or negatively impacted by that. More than a billion people will vote in the next 20 months. So we've seen over the last 12 months this explosion in the powers and capability of generative AI technologies everyone's talking about and very interested in and, yes, concerned about. 
what these technologies might do to how we communicate and how we trust one another. One of the things that we think is so important is to be able to have the conversations about what we want our public sphere to look like and how we want our democracies to function. So I'm concerned that if we don't get on the front foot with sensible regulation that helps us think about what online harms are, we won't be able to have the robust public sphere that we've all come to rely on. So the work that we're doing with the AI for Trust Consortium really is part of a suite of investments that's helping to think about how we put a set of values into the technologies that we're designing. Yeah. So with technology innovation and regulation, it's a delicate dance. And we've seen the EU AI soon to be ratified, as we hope, but there's been over 150 companies that have said, hold on a second. We don't necessarily feel like you're solving the problem and we're not going to be as technically innovative as we could be. So let's have a bit more of a conversation around this. Ursula van der Linden has been saying since she came into office, her first hundred days, she's going to get this AI problem licked. And it's a particularly challenging one because then we've got harmonization for a variety of different areas as well to take into consideration. Where do you stand in that innovation, regulation, delicate dance? That's a great question. So just today, my center, along with two other research institutes at Cambridge, released a report on what the UK policy on generative AI should be. And essentially, we're not calling for blanket bans, as some people did in the, yeah, a few months ago in development. In fact, we're saying that for companies to be able to build products and services on the foundations of generative AI models that they don't control, they're going to need some guardrails in place. We are hearing from some very large companies that don't worry, they have it in hand. But we also need to be careful that they're not building moats to keep everybody else out. So this is where I think part of that delicate dance you refer to is, is important because just as we want to ensure we have uh, innovative and productive markets, we want to make sure that we're not locking countries or companies out of being able to develop for that. So I think there are great models. One of the things that we're doing as well is I'm working with a whole group of different stakeholders, including cross-party parliamentarians, working with civil society groups, working with trade unions, working with the tech industry and working with other researchers and law, law experts to think about what an AI and employment bill would look like for the UK. That's no easy task. But employers are also telling us that they want some clarity over what a right to review would look like in, in UK law. So the EU has taken one stance that says we're going to have a, a, an AI act. I think there's we're going to see in different jurisdictions, different kinds of approaches. But all of these approaches need to consider that in order for innovation to happen, companies and citizens alike are going to need a little bit of clarity. And that kind of clarity is what comes from regulation. Yeah, because the biggest challenge that we're seeing with business leaders is that they're shelving projects because they're concerned which way it's going to go. And consequently, they're going to, it's a wait and see. And the impact then is the economy is a wait and see. Absolutely. Absolutely. We don't want a wait and see economy, right? But especially when we have these extraordinary opportunities. So for example, let's take, let's go back to generative AI. There are in some models, really serious intellectual property challenges, issues that companies see as a risk. There's real risks of cybersecurity. There's real risk of injection threats, of injecting misinformation or bad information into models to, to somehow manipulate the, the output yeah. of others, right? There's the leakiness of these models where asking questions and prompts could inadvertently divulge private information from companies, right? And so governments are already saying, be careful about how you play and experiment with these, that you're not divulging sensitive information. So companies aren't going to build on these models. They're not going to make a 
business model on these models until they get some clarity of what their legal risks are, where they have rights and responsibilities, and what's the extent of their own intellectual property, right? This is how markets function. So we think that some attention to this space is really important, especially if we want to see the flourishing of small, medium enterprise. This brings me straight back to those early days of the wild, wild west of the World Wide Web, right? Those early days of the first commercial internet where you had all of these young companies, these young entrepreneurs experimenting and playing. We have that possibility now. In some ways, the democratization of how AI tools are going to be able to be in more hands. But we're going to have to have some guidance in place in order to make markets and make markets happen successfully. Gina Neff, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Join us at the AI Ireland Awards 2023, presented by principal sponsor Microsoft. On the 21st of November at the Gibson Hotel, Dublin 1, you'll discover the pinnacle of AI innovation on the island of Ireland. The AI Ireland Awards 2023 ceremony proudly presented by principal sponsor Microsoft celebrates excellence in data science, machine learning and artificial intelligence, showcasing AI applications across multiple industries and AI for social good. Get your tickets at eventfly or aiireland.ie.